everyone welcome to knitting noodles and in today's video we are going to go over how to do ribbing the rib stitch or rib pattern not sure the exact way to say that let me look that up the jury is back it is rib stitch so you say stitch so we're gonna go over how to do the rib stitch uh we're just gonna do a very simple one by one just to cover it but there is different um patterns such as a two by two or a three by three and i will show you what i mean when i bring you down here hello future editing me here um i already packed away all of my videoing stuff so i forgot i have a small announcement for anyone who is in the long island new york area june 4th i am actually going to be doing a craft fair in yapank um under my uh, business name of Wolf Baby Boutique and I'm doing it with a friend of mine who does crochet so we're gonna have knit and crochet baby things so if you're in the area or free um, it would be awesome if you wanted to come down and see us so I just thought I'd put that out there uh, as a little announcement enjoy the rest of the video guys bye all right for this you're obviously gonna need yarn and needles I'm just using a basic mid-weight yarn and a size seven needles, which is what it recommends on this specific yarn. Um, I am going to cast on, uh, since we're learning a new stitch, I'll keep it small and I will do 10. Now for rib stitch, depending on if it's two, one by one, two by two, three by three, um, you may want an even, or an odd number. Um, for one by one, it doesn't matter that much. For two by two, you would obviously need more of a even number as the name suggests. Um, three by three, it could go either way. Um, I just like going with 10 for basic learning new stitches. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, and ten. All right, so what ribbing is, is it's alternating knit and purl stitches. So for how stockinette stitch was, if you need a review stockinette stitch up there, or if you want to, you don't really need to, um, that is the entire row was knit, and then the next entire row was purl. For ribbing, each row you alternate knitting and purling. So a one by one rib means you knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, which is what I'm gonna go over with you. Now, if a pattern calls for a two by two rib, that means knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. And again, if it says a three by three rib, it would be three knit, three purls. So let's get into just a basic one by one. So knit first stitch, need to review how to knit right up there. Purl the next stitch. And if you need to review how to purl, I also have a video on that. So we're just gonna go across the entire row, knit and purl. Now you may think, Oh my goodness, I'm never going to remember this. As you keep working, it gets very, very easy to see where you have to knit next and where you have to purl next. You'll see the difference as you are knitting. So let me fast forward this and I will show you how you'll be able to tell. I just did four rows. Now you can kind of start to tell by the um, second row. So if you look closely, you can see there's alternating 
there's V's. It looks a little messy on here just because we're still at the beginning. But you can see at least the last one, it's pretty clear that it's V's. Now let's turn it over. Now, if you're going back, you can see first stitch, you see a V underneath it. So you know that's a knit one. Next stitch, if you get confused, see there's a little bump right there. That's how you know that's a purl stitch. So you go back, you purl that one. Then let's say you put it down, you walk away, you forget where you are, next stitch, you see the little V and you're like, oh, that's right. We did knit purl, now we're at the knit one. And a little bump again, that's how you know it's a purl. And you just continue on like that. Now ribbing is great for, um, you see it a lot on sweaters, especially on collars and uh, the sleeves by the wrist because ribbing is very stretchy. The alternating of knit and purl makes almost an accordion so it kind of goes like a wave if you look at it straight on which means that it takes yarn that maybe isn't that stretchy normally and makes it a little extra stretchy which is extra good for sleeves and collars for sweaters that you slip on. Um, also often on the rim of hats. So you can kind of see cotton is not naturally that stretchy. Something like wool naturally has a little bit more stretch, but cotton usually doesn't have that much stretch, but you can see when I pull on it, it does kind of bounce back. It's not as drastic as if it was, let's say a sock yarn, which has, um, nylon or spandex in it already so that has some stretch to it this is just plain old cotton and it still has a little bit of stretch and give to it so that's what you would use ribbing for also it can look pretty nice uh it, you can't see it yet because the bottom still looks a little ugly let me fast forward and i'll show you how nice it can look okay i did a few more rows and as you can see it's looking a lot nicer and you can really see more of the accordion type shape where it's going whoop 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 um now let's talk a little bit about cast offs for ribbing now if you need to review how to cast off up there however for ribbing you could do the regular cast off that's in this video that is the most basic the easiest way to cast off is just the knit cast off. However, it is it has no stretch to it. So it will be like a hard tight line at the top. Everything else will be stretchy except for that top part, which might not be a problem in a few things. Um, however, it might look a little weird because instead of the accordion shape, it'll be a flat line, just flat like this. Um, I've done that before for a scarf where I just did a regular cast off. I did the entire scarf and ribbing, so there's all these nice waves in it. Then one side is all ribbed, and the other side was completely flat. So it looked a little weird when the scarf was on someone because of that laying flat. There is a fairly complicated cast off method. I believe it's called, um, Jenny's surprisingly stretchy cast off. However, that is a little difficult. The easiest way to get more of a following little bit of a wave while still being easier is to also cast off in ribbing. So how we would do that is we would do the cast off, but by following the ribbing pattern. So instead of knitting every stitch, we'd still knit and purl. Second stitch would come over. Next stitch is a knit. We'd knit that. That last stitch comes over the first. This next stitch is a purl, so we'd purl it. And we just continue like this across the row and it will give a little bit more shape. It still will be a little stiff but not as much if you just knit, did like a regular old knit cast off. All right, let's continue down the row, a purl. And we're at a knit. 
again, because this is a regular cast off, it's just alternating knit and purls. It is not going to be that stretchy. It just won't lay as flat as the normal knit cast off. This is just to make it not look as wonky. There are more complicated patterns uh, for casting off. Um, I'll see if I could link a video that I like up here for all different cast off methods that you could use. All right, and that's the last one. And let me find a pair of scissors. I think I packed mine away because I'm going vacation. But luckily I have a pair of baby nail clippers. I'll just use those. Look at that, perfect cut. Then we just put that last stitch through. And as you can see, it's not laying as flat as say, um, a regular knit cast off wool. I'll grab you a sample. All right, here is another sample that I did. This was stockinette stitch. And regular, it is not that stretchy. For stockinette stitch, it doesn't have to be. But you can see how a lot more structured it is than this one. If you knit in purl, instead of the Vs being in the front, you get it on top, which makes it a lot more square. It lays flat. It doesn't like press anything down. So we still have the dimension of the ribbing with some stretch without this compressing uh, line of V cast off that it would have if we just did a regular knit cast off. So I hope this video was helpful. Now you know how to do ribbing, either one by one, two by two, three by three. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, and I will see you all next week in the next video. Bye!